So the results of, you know, Destiny for Breast were amazing. First of all, this is a, you know, a large randomized phase three trial. One of the first that's demonstrating really therapeutic benefit of HER2 targeted agents and HER2 low breast cancer. Um, and because many of the other drugs that we've had and used in the past, of which are numerous, um, really didn't target this population, many institutions, at least in the United States, and I, I don't know internationally, but many institutions in the United States no longer even look at IHC. They only look at ish or fish. And as a result, they're going to miss a significant population of patients that would otherwise benefit. So I think one of the biggest challenges in this country, in this country and possibly even in the world is we have to rethink and change our standards of diagnostics. Maybe in part going back to the IHC, but because as I showed you in one of the publications that I presented, the variability in readouts of IHC 0, 1, and 2 plus are so significant that we actually need better diagnostic tools to be able to define that patient population. But there are two issues. Number one, there are no other diagnostic tools that have currently looked at this population either retrospectively or prospectively within the context of treatment with NHER2 or tristuzumab deruxtecan. And secondly, what is the right diagnostic tool? I showed the quantitative assay in the ASCO presentation that has been developed by one of our colleagues at Yale and that we're going to be using a standard practice um, within the next few months. We're just getting the assay CLIA certified so that we can use it prospectively as standard practice in all breast cancer patients. But it hasn't yet been tested in the NHER2 setting or the tristuzumab deruxtecan setting. The other thing that we need to think about, would phosphoproteomics, looking at phosphoher2, be as good, if not better, a diagnostic tool? We don't know because nobody's looked at phosphoher2 as well. And nobody's looked at a comparative of phosphoher2 versus a quantitative assay looking at uh, very, very small levels of HER2. And what is the cutoff? I mean, I showed you a cutoff based on what Dr. David Rim had published in his manuscript, but we don't know if that is the cutoff that would be the appropriate level of HER2 protein for efficacy with tristuzumab deruxtecan. But this is, this is you know, a game changer. It's a game changer not only in that we have therapeutic interventions now that we can give these patients, but also we need to rethink how we identify these patients. HER2 low, which was really never a category that we thought about before, is now a category that is real and is relevant and comprises at least half of all breast cancers. So we've really opened up, number one, a new classification. We have to really rethink how we classify these patients. Number two, how do we identify these patients? Do we have the right diagnostics or do we need to define additional diagnostics? And number three, you know, we, do we need to go back to women that have had metastatic breast cancer and relook and see how we defined them as HER2 negative? Because there's a lot of women and men out there that have had metastatic breast cancer for a while, and they may not have had IHC testing. But even if they did, because of the variability, do we need to reread their tissue? and have it looked at by more than one pathologist. Because if you think about it, the majority of women between the HER2 low and the HER2 positive will now be eligible for a drug like tristuzumab deruxtecan.